Good afternoon people out there in the internet world. It's James here again at Weekend Warlords. Now, sorry you don't get to see me on the stream this time, but that is quite simply because what you can see in front of you is way more important than my face. And uh, Before we get started on our live unboxing of the new Age of Sigma Soul Wars box set, I'd just like to say I apologise now for any sniffles or sneezes. Unfortunately, hay fever at the moment is absolutely kicking my butt. So, this is the Soul Wars box set. It is classed, it's being classed as 2.0 for Warhammer Age of Sigma. Okay, as you can see from the, book, uh, the box itself, it's a lot darker than the previous box set and some really nice artwork on the front. You've got the redesigned uh, Age of Sigma logo. And what's interesting is just below the Soul Wars, it says the ultimate Warhammer Age of Sigma box set. So you can tell that Games Workshop are putting a lot of stock in this box themselves. Now, if we flip the box over, we can see our contents there. Now, I'm just gonna break there just quickly, guys. If you do have any questions while we're going through this live unboxing, chuck the comments in on the uh, live stream on the YouTube, and I'll do my best to answer anything uh, that you guys would like to know. So going back to the box, you can see uh, just on the back of the box, everything on a nice picture of what you get in the box, plus your contents. You have got a 320 page Warhammer Age of Sigma core book. You've then got a 32 page Battle of Glim's Forge booklet, a 16 page Core Rules booklet, and an eight page Start Here booklet. So there's absolutely plenty to read, along with 13 more scroll cards. That's for each unit in the box. And you'll see when we open this, we've seen on the images on the community page that they've redesigned the um, War Scroll cards, and they're a lot better, a lot more. Uh, use of the space on the card and a lot easier to read. You've also got the dice pack and a range ruler in the box plus the 52 miniatures which range from the Lord Arcanum uh, on Griff Charger which is the character for the Stormcast all the way down to 20 Chain Rasp which will be uh, the core units for the uh, Night Haunts. But let's, let's stop talking about what's on the box and let's start having a look at what's in the box. So let's get this polythene off nice and easy. I'm not messing around this time as I always seem to have trouble getting in, but this time we brought a knife. So here we go. Oh, we've got a slide to get the box out, and as you can see there, you've got some very, very nice artwork on the internal. Uh, we've then got a pull-out box, and underneath you can see there is your core book. It's hardback. It's very nice, very nice hardback books, very similar to the 8th edition one 40,000 core book that you get in the box. We've then got our Battle for Glim's Forge, which is a nice look there. We've also got our War Scroll cards and there's some tips on building and painting as well. And then just underneath the card pullout, we've got the largest base, I believe, for the miniatures. We've got, if I can just get it up, nice little transfer sheet. Let's see if we can get that focused in on. Just about. <laughs> We've then got our set of dice, which are very nice, uh, clear blue plastic. We've got a next steps collecting guide. We've then got a sample chapter of Soul Wars by Josh Reynolds. So you can have, there's so much to read in this box. Really, really great stuff. We've got a couple more bases. And we've got our range ruler. So there we go, that's everything out of the bottom of the box. We'll just move that aside. So we'll get these out of the way. And we're not gonna jump into the miniature straight away. Let's have a little bit more of a closer look at the core book to see what this differs in regards to a general's handbook. So let's get this part clean off. There we go, chuck this rubbish up there. Thank you, John. So as we open up our contents page, oh, we've got some nice artwork, and our contents page is listed as, in sub-segments, The Tale of Aeons, Factions of the Mortal Realm, Fire and Thunder, and what it looks like is, this is gonna be a book of redefining the background and the fluff that we know about Age of Sigma, really bring us up to date with what's going on in the worlds, uh, and what's going on in the mortal realms, and who is actually inhabiting the mortal realms. So as you can see going through is a lot to read, a lot of maps, a lot of artwork on all the different races in the Sigma world. And if we flick through a bit quick, we've got some miniatures gallery, some of the newer models, 
Let's have a look and see how far. So we've got some of the newer models they've released so far. We've got our Forces of Chaos. Still, still showing some of the older models. That's really cool. Just reinforces that nothing you've collected over the years is useless. Everything is still able to be used in the current edition of Age of Sigma, which is fantastic. Here's some nice up close of some death, including the new models in the core set. And as we go to the back, moving through destruction and fire and thunder, here we go, we've got the core rules inside your core book. So you have still got the rules in there, which is very nice. We've also got alliances, alliance abilities for all the general bits and bobs you've using so far in Age of Sigma. So that's very handy. We've got some open play game rules got some match play of game rules as well for battle plans and it looks to be similar to the ones we've seen love so far but with some extra touches we've got the rules to use in narrative play games to run in your own in campaigns so there's a lot of stuff in there to help you you know play games with your friends at home run campaigns with a larger group of people there's even rules about playing underground so this would be absolutely fantastic if you're looking to do a theme game be maybe between some goblins or skaven and dwarfs. There's rules here for fighting underground. And as I said, we've got some matched play uh, gaming rules in the background as well with what looks like completely new missions, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. There we are. Yeah, if anybody wants us to uh, show anything, uh, comment on the stream right now. There we are guys, if you want anything in particular looked at, as John just said, give us a shout on the uh, comment section on the YouTube, we will show you exactly what you want to look at. So that is our core book. Going into our pack of our smaller booklets, let's get this open. No, 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 no. We all love polythene, don't we? Let's get this off. So we've got our War Scrolls, we'll come back to those later. Uh, this is our Battle of Glimfor Glimsforge, hope I'm pronouncing that right. And what this looks like is a bit of narrative on what you're using in the box. So we're talking about why they're fighting each other and what has brought them to fight each other. And as we go through, it's got listings of more uh, background information about the units, who they are and what they do. Uh, we've got some nice picture galleries of the models all painted up which is very nice to give you some inspiration to your own. And there's a bit more about the Night Haunts at the back. So this is a cool booklet for using everything that you've got in the box and giving yourself a bit of narrative to the games themselves. Our core rules, here we have them. Nice thin booklet. This will be great for a reference guide because it will be what you've got in the core book, but at a glance and a lot easier to flick through rather than having to page through a load of different pages. We've got our Start Here book. So this will be for new gamers or new players to Age of Sigma, and it will give you some ideas on how to go about choosing your armies, building them, um, and what you can do to expand on what you've got in the box. And there's another nice simple mission on the back. And then we've got our how to build guide for all the miniatures in the box, showing you your sprues, your bases, and a nice set of co uh, coloured and black and white instructions there to get you building them nice and swiftly. And there we go, so now, I guess there's only sort of really one thing to do, and that's look at the miniatures themselves. So, when I can work out, oh, here we are, that's how you get into the box. Let's fold this back nicely so you can see exactly just how much plastic is in this box. So you've got a massive bag of bases there. Got all your miniatures in the box. We've got various sprues. This looks like the Night Haunts. Let's actually move this out of the way a minute. And then you can see there better. If we lean it there. You can see this is the Night Haunts character sprue. So you can just see how much detail is on that model. Uh, from there, we've got some what looks like the Night Haunt uh, core units. So you'll have a couple of these to build up what you're using for your mass troops. Get through two. We've got some Stormcast. Again, these would be your core units. You'll have a couple of these. As you can see there, again, a lot of detailing going into the weapons, uh, right onto the parchment on the gowns. They've all got nice inscripted 
uh, language there and as you can see on the other side it's just exactly the same amount of intricate detail on those. We've then got some of the larger Night Haunt spirits um, which look absolutely fantastic. You can have some great fun painting all of the different um, trails of cloth and spirits sort of moulding them into one whether you go for blends or solid colours they're just going to look absolutely fantastic. We've got more storm casting including on this sprue if you look down to this corner you've got the pieces to make up that large sort of repeating uh, bolt thrower which we haven't seen the rules for just yet so it's, these are all new units that's one really cool thing about this box all the units in this box are brand new it's not something you've seen in an army book before it's not something that we've had access to before with older miniatures these are all completely brand new including this absolutely stunning Stormcast Eternal character on a Griff Rider you see there it's just absolutely fantastic detailing on that um, there's a lot more character in these isn't absolutely they? uh, there's you know they've got they're so dynamic the models the um, just lots more detail in the character. It's far superior to a lot of the old core sets we've had. Um, in my imagination, are they scaled down slightly, maybe? Do you think they're scaled down uh, compared the heads to. Have maybe, I think. I don't know. I mean, you've got to remember that these are brand new units and these are from a new Stormcast uh, faction that are based around magic, which Stormcast haven't been before. They've had prayers, but they've never had uh, essentially magic casters, whereas this is a completely new chamber to them. Uh, and they're going to have a lot more to add to the Stormcast uh, army as a whole and they'll be able to either run on their own or run as a larger order faction. So they are very nice though. They are absolutely yeah. stunning. Both sides have got loads of lovely new models to choose from. So these are our War Scroll cards, so they come in a nice uh, they actually give you the War Scroll layer. cards though. They absolutely do. Now anyone who's used War Scroll cards in the past will notice that in bef before we've had them like this, with a small bit of writing there, small bit of writing there, and a load of useless space and real, really small writing, very hard to read. And although they are handy to speed up uh, your gaming, they have been awkward in the same sense. But now that they're landscape, as you can see there, there's just a lot more uh, spreading of the word in. You've got your stat lines, you've got any special rules for the unit itself. Uh, this, for instance, is the Ballister, the repeater bolt thrower, and it has all the different varied shots. Uh, you've got single shot or rapid fire to give you varied uh, amounts of damage on your uh, opponent's units. Uh, the single shot gives you more range, the rapid fire gives you a few more shots. Uh, we've then got the Castigators, which are the ranged units. We've got the Sequitas, which are the more uh, users so similar to your uh, original stormcast units but change into mauls rather than with hammers um, I don't know how they're affected with the magic yet we'll have to have a deep read at a later date uh, we've got the evocator uh, which I believe is one of the new characters and we've got the knight in cantor which is the new uh, magic caster for the stormcast and then inside a nice little art booklet there You've oh, got no, the Lord Arcanum, yeah. so he's got a lot more rules to him by the look of it as well, and he's got the use of magic himself. And also, handily, holds all your cards. Okay. So that's the Stormcast, and then we've got the Night Haunts as well, so similar I'm guessing. Oh, no, the Knight of Shrouds has got his own just rule stat card there. So there he is, we've also got the Guardian of Souls. We've got the Lord Executioner, there's a lot more characters in this. Uh, Spirit Torment, the Grimgast Reapers, the Clay Wraith Stalkers, Glaive Wraith Stalkers, and the Chain Rasp Horde. And all of those, again, a landscape, a lot easier to read, a lot easier to read and it, a lot more useful. It's use absolutely of the cards. great that they've given you them, but I kind of question. The double sidedness of that, but I suppose it's got so many rules. He on has it. got a lot of rules to, do, to right? look at that so far, isn't yeah. it? It's going to be interesting because obviously at the moment as well, without the General's Handbook uh, and without their own uh, Battle Tomb, which comes out in the future, we have no idea of points. And I don't remember seeing 
anything of points in any of the paperwork that we have here so we're still going to be interesting to find out just how many points each of these units are whether the uh, core box actually balances up which sometimes sometimes people might find the you know the, the good guys will have a bit more of an upper hand so we'll see if the storm cars do find it quite easy to do away with the night haunts um, do we have any power points at all there's no power in Sigma. Oh, is there not? No, there's no, no power in Sigma. No, 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 no. So powers only come in with 8th edition 40k. So there's no, <coughs> excuse me, there's no power in Sigma. Uh, you can have open play where you suppose you can use your own rules or earlier variants of the Age of Sigma rules where you just go on wounds or model count. But in match play games, there's the rules. Uh, and that's all we have to build our Age of Sigma armies. Now, so that is the core set. Again, if you do have any questions, chuck them on. We're gonna be here a bit longer. So if there's stuff you want us to come back to the core set and go through, please just ask us and let us know and we will do that. But not only have we got the core box to show you today, we also have the Malign Sorcery box. So this is a completely new expansion. Uh, for Age of Sigma, where you're going to have Roman spells uh, and various other large spells. Some older uh, gamers might think that it, it or remind us of Storm of Magic, uh, things like that. And what's really cool is not only do you have these spells to use, you also have models to represent them. So inside this box, you can see this is one side. We've got the Malevolent Maelstrom, we've got the Chronomatic Cogs, we've got the Quicksilver Swords, the Burning Head, the Aether Void Pendulum, and the Emerald Life Swarm at the bottom. I'm gonna flip straight over to the other side. Uh, we've got the Purple Son of Shaish, which is pretty much a reference to uh, older spells from the fantasy universe. Purple Sun's been around quite a long time. We've got the Umbral Spell Portals, and the Geminids of Ulngish. Again, I'm sorry if I'm not quite pronouncing this right, but that's, that's what it looks to me on the box. Um, on the back of the box, we then see we've got the Ravenax Gnashing Jaws, the Soul Snare Shackles, the Suffocating Grave Tide, and the Prismatic Palisade. Uh, you can see these all listed on the contents of the box as well. But we've also got an 88 page War Scroll, uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma Malign Sorcery book, and 14 War Scroll cards for the spells themselves. So again, War Scrolls being added into the box is gonna make it a lot easier, a lot quicker to play your games grab your, uh, your war scroll for when you're casting the spell rather than flicking through pages. So that's gonna be great. It comes in a really nice box with a nice little carry handle so you can take it to your various games you're playing. So let's have a look inside. It's gonna be a bit trickier to open. We're okay. Oh wow, there we are. We've got a bag within a box with some very, very Nice artwork on it there. That was unexpected. That was unexpected. <laughs> That's the first time that uh, I've known Games Workshop to put bags inside boxes. So we'll start with the War Scrolls, I guess. So as you can see, just from the Bell Wind Vortex there, it's gonna be a lot easier and a lot quicker to run through your spells with by just having these, I've not done a very good job of that, by having these War Scroll cards handy for use in your games. Let's have a look, let's see if we can get these open now. Again guys, any questions about any of these spells, anything you want to know about the box set itself, please just chuck the questions up on the YouTube live feed right now. So again, as you can see there, you've got your spells. Somebody called Apollo is asking if you're in all day today. We are in, I am in all day today, yes. I'm in from one o'clock all the way till midnight. And if you're lucky enough to come in today, you will actually see me building some of these models so we can you know, show them off over the weekend. Well, we are indeed. So again, there's all your battle scroll cards for your spells. I'm not sure who we follow with. <laughs> no you. There we are, apparently so. Right then, and Malign Sorcery. Let's have a look in this book. I believe we've got a couple of books in there. I think one of them is the How to Build. Let's have a look. Feeling a bit like Christmas opening all this. So there's our Malign Sorcery book. There's a Malign Sorcery booklet on how to build uh, your spell. So as you can see from the purple sun, there's a bit of intricacy to that, but it looks like it's got some nice framework inside to make oh, wow. it easier. I thought it would be just a two piece. So did I, model, they've actually yeah. really gone to town on this. Uh, the cogs as well, these are nice as simpler bits. A lot of them seem to be just two piece kits or straight to base singular sculpts. 
kind of expect that with them. Absolutely. Yeah. What's really cool as well is it's all colour coded as well. It makes it nice and easy to read the instructions. Yeah. So this is our Malign Sorcery book. Our content, uh, straight away, how to use this book. That's always going to be uh, handy. Uh, the, and then we've got the Magic in the Mortal Realms, the learning of magic concerning real stone. How living magic come to the mortal realm, so there's a nice bit of fluff there for you and how you know this magic has come about. And then we've got a new era of magic which has got all your different spells. Uh, manifestations of magic, so painting uh, endless spells, that's gonna be really cool, it'd be a nice paint guard I'm guessing. And then we've got the Conjurer's Compendulum, uh, which has got the malign sorcery, the endless spells, there's battle plans, uh, and some more different spells of the realm as realms as well. So let's start by going it's through keep the book. You going for a long while, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, two point right? Yeah. What's cool about this is, as it's an expansion, um, you know, it's it's completely up to how much or how little you use of it in your games, and it also just means that you can expand on any game missions you play from open play to match play. So you'll have a lot more. Uh, lifespan in your games that you won't just be playing the same games over and over so straight away you can see they've given us detailed breakdown of all the different mortal realms and what magics are going to be sort of flowing about in them uh, which would be really cool we've got a lot of nice uh, background information at the front uh, learning about different magic items uh, learning about the living magic some nice artwork there with Slanesh featuring which is really cool Oh, ooh, that's very nice. You can see that. This is the uh, artwork for the spell, which is one of the pieces you get in the Malign uh, spells, and that is just scary uh, to even look at. Again, more imagery of the spells that you'll be using um, as we go through. Manifestations, this is your paint guide, and looking at how Games Workshop have painted it and given you options. We see the bring back the Bellwind Vortex as a usable piece of terrain on your game. So anyone who's got those lying around, it's going to be absolutely fantastic reinvigorating that piece. If you have got rid of it, tut tut, you'll be wanting that again soon, I'm sure. Uh, as we carry on through, we see, oh, here we go, we've actually got the painting guides for any of the pieces that come in this kit. So that'll be absolutely fantastic. Uh, and here we go, we've got the different usage of spells, we've got some Realm Gate. Uh, battle plans, so more missions to be able to vary your games while playing. This one looks interesting, it looks like you've got a wave of magic coming from one side of the board to the other, so you're going to have to look at not just what your opponent's doing, but what that's doing. Uh, and as we get to the back of the board, we've got more battle plans to use in the skirmish games. Again, more battle plans, more ways of using your spells. They've got the, so this is actually, sorry, we'll go back a bit. These are the spells of each of the mortal realms. So when you're playing in the mortal realms, you can choose to add these to your games. So you can theme about you know, what would be available to you with the realm you're playing in. We've then got artifacts of the realms as well. So not only will you have magic available to you depending on what realm you fight in, but you'll also have weapons which will vary your games up again and also give you uh, give your characters uh, access to weapons that they've never been able to use before. We've also got some pitch battle uh, profile here. So we've got how many spells you can have and how many points they are. So you've actually got use of the spells in what looks like match play games. That'll be interesting for tournament play, things like that, being able to put them in. And a couple more battle plans. So that is, your Malign Sorcery Expansion book. And now, this very interesting bag. As you can see, it's got very nice artwork with all the Mortal Realms on it. And that's double-sided. Uh, I'm gonna see if this is a resealable bag. It is indeed. So as you can see there, it's a resealable bag. So you'll be able to, once you've built these, if you're careful enough to be able to put them back in a bag, take them with you to all your games. And that way, you can put it all back in your box, and it's actually going to be able to keep all of your gaming uh, bits from your line sorcery in one place. That's very nice touch. Well done, G-Double, and that's awesome. And yes. none of these pictures have really given any... Uh, just to you know, see how big these spells are, did not realise that some of them. So this is That's our <laughs> yeah, this is our wave uh, and our gnashing jaw. And as you can see, let's grab a let's grab a standard model from the corset. So if you can see, this is the 
So this is the Jaws profile, and this is a Stormcast Eternals uh, torso, just next to it, which shows you pretty much the height of a Stormcast. One of the biggest infantry models in Age of Sigma, and is absolutely dwarfed by this spell by double its size. And again, if we flip this round, you can see just on the tide as well, just the difference in size comparison from the spell to the uh, models. So these are going to be absolutely huge, and they're going to, you know, you're really going to be able to use these very tactically in a game just yeah. by how much presence they have on the board. Something that's really nice about the waves that we didn't notice on the images, or I haven't noticed, shall I say, is there's actually some broken, uh, what looks like the top of a, a Stormcast tomb. So that's really nice. Uh, we've got, this is just the framework to the Purple Sun, so very cool. But we'll move on to the Purple Sun itself. We've seen how many pieces this makes up, just how big this is going to be on the board. Again, it's gonna create some presence in your games and it's gonna make everything a lot more tactical, uh, trying to position it right or position against it so that it's not gonna cause you too much harm. It's really gonna change things up, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, you know, just, just knowing that there's these spells floating around on the table, uh, how do you use them best? You know, do they affect your units? We have, we, we don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see if once the spell is about, does it just get its own use? Can it move around on its own? Uh, we've got what looks like a shielding wall there. More pieces of the different magic uh, in the set, and just yeah, the scale is just not well shown in the in the images we've seen so far until you get it in your hands with the models no they, absolutely you know? they're they're absolutely huge this is amazing um and something that you would have seen off on camera here but silver plastic <laughs> yeah, wow. ne silver plastic i've never seen uh well anyone do this before to my knowledge uh so that's really cool it might make it easier to get some quick paint jobs on your uh on your spells you certainly with the color plastics you're certainly going to be able to use these almost straight out of the box absolutely uh, they all um, look very simple to build as well bar the purple sun it shouldn't be too long uh to get them together but then again with its framework going on the inside should be relatively easy to put together. Yeah, the pur I want to see the purple sun built up. It's, it's going to be quite a moral. Absolutely. All the bases have whole slots in, so I'm wondering if this is going to be you know, the simplest kit to put together, virtually snap together like you'd see in uh, older corsets. Uh, I mean, I'm really impressed by the bag, if I have to be honest. Uh, a yeah. resealable bag. And it is really heavy duty. It is. So, I mean, this is what's cool about this, guys, is one thing we've always had as gamers is obviously where to store things. Now, with your armies, you have your carry cases uh, and you can put them in wrapped in foam uh, and they stay, you know, they stay safe. That's, that's what they're there for. With this, because they're really, I mean, they're really sturdy plastic pieces. Even the uh, chain snares, which I thought were going to be quite uh, brittle and fiddly, because the scale is so much bigger than I actually realised it was, this is really sturdy. I mean, there's loads of chain link on actual models that just by putting this force on would break, but these are going to, you know, they'll be really sturdy and keep themselves uh, in, in shape and, and all together. So once you've built these models, they're going to be quite easy to put back into this bag. I mean, we did have our concerns, didn't we? Because we did, the, yeah, the, absolutely. The, the, the Soul Wars box is made in the UK and designed in the UK, whereas the Malign Sorcery is designed. So that, yes. that indicates that it's probably made somewhere else. So, Let, elsewhere. Let's, yeah. let's say China. Yeah. <laughs> let's say it, because it probably is. But uh, this plastic it's is solid. It's solid. And it doesn't look to be like, I mean, we've had problems before with uh, some terrain pieces that Games Workshop put out, like the uh, Voidshop Generator and the Plasma Blast Cannon, where the moulds were done in a way that, you know, it changed, it warped, it didn't go together very nicely, whereas from the look of these, um, it, it, they just look fantastic. Yeah, yeah. They really do. Well, we've got to put them together first. We, but we yeah, are, it, we by, are. By, by initial looks, which is usually a good indication, uh, it all, yeah, it all looks like this. Look like they're going to go together just fine. It looks to be the standard of any coloured plastic the Games Workshop have released in the past, which have been going over a lot of their, um, you know, sculpts we've ever seen before. Whether it's been from back when they done Lost Patrol with the Scouts and Gene Stealers, uh, to things like Shades by they've done now, they just look fantastic. As you can see, let's just put them back all. See how much of this we can get on camera. There's all your various spells. Uh, and yeah, as I said, you'll be able to build these, put them back in your bag, put your books on top, put them straight back in this box, which does have a nice carry handle to it. I'm gonna show you that. It's just a nice little carry handle on your box. 
and it just means you'll be able to store it a lot easier, a lot safer. You'll be able to take it to, you know, wherever you're playing your games, whether it's down here at Weekend Worlds or whether it's just around a mate's house, you'll be able to bring it down, play with it, no problem, uh, and it'll all stay safe. I, I think this is going to be one of the first expansions that they've done that gets regular table time. Absolutely. Because quite often, let's face it, you know, you get the flyer rules for 40k or whatever it is and, and it just seems like a cheap mini game that yeah. you play alongside whereas this is uh, well, I mean this has got to be the first proper expansion we've seen in a long time uh, you know we've had the years when Apocalypse first come out and okay you don't play Apocalypse all the time but it is a proper rule set expansion yeah, where yeah. you get to choose whatever you want in a game yeah. uh, we had for Old Fantasy we had Storm of Magic we had uh, Triumph and Treachery uh, and we even had rules for Siege Warfare you know, proper expansions. This is the first time since Sigma's come about that we've actually got an expansion with its own rules, with additional rules to change games that you play in Age of Sigma, yeah. whether it's open play, match play. I think I really, I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm a corn player, I don't use magic. So this is, uh, I, I'm just going to get hit with all this. I'm going to get no benefit out of this whatsoever. And I'm really excited to see it on the table. Yeah, um, I must admit, I am. Yeah, it's it, going to be fantastic. It is, it can't, I, I kind of feel like it's. it's going back to old fantasy with magic and, and stuff like that it will never be old fantasy don't get me wrong but I, I, I've, I it feels it, it feels definitely it's going in the right direction because more I mean, than what, Age of Sigmar did absolutely I mean one of the massive things for me especially with Malign Portents was the first step in it for me uh, when we first got Age of Sigmar you know we just had these bubble realms of magic and stuff floating about we didn't really know anything about it whereas now uh, going back to like the core book and that you've got real background information about the people who are inhabiting these worlds the different realms and, and what they mean to the world of Sigma, and you know why they're fighting over it it's not just chaos blowing up the world and getting on with it these are real realms with real races and real stuff going on inside it these are going to go on pre-order tomorrow guys okay just so you know that we've got two weeks worth of pre-orders um it's going to be released on the weekend of the 30th is it yep so it's all released on the weekend of the 30th all our pre-orders go live tomorrow um we'll give you some prices just so you know so you've got in the head uh, the core set is RRP at Games Workshops 95, but obviously at Weekend Wars we like to look after our gamers, uh, and ours is going to be £80 bang on the head. Uh, so that's £80 for the core set with everything we showed you earlier, and the Malign Sorcery box is going to be £38, uh, RRP for Games Workshops 45, so you've got your saving on that as well. Now, for the first week of pre-orders, so from tomorrow until the 23rd, of June, that's one week only, we're going to be doing a bundle offer where you can get yourself hands on the Malign Sorcery and the Corset for £110. Okay, so pre-orders go live tomorrow. If you want to take advantage of that deal, you need to get it done within the first week, so from tomorrow until next week, till the 23rd of June. Any pre-orders, you are guaranteed your Corset, your Malign Sorcery, whatever you order, on release day. If you don't get your pre-orders in, we can't guarantee you just because of how many numbers we can actually gain from Games Workshop. Uh, we will also have the pre-order going up for the General's Handbook as well, uh, and all the individual uh, dice expansions that they are releasing. Three different sets of dice, There's, I believe. Yep, we've got scenery uh, dice, we've got command dice, and we've got wound counters. All of that is going to be available to pre-order tomorrow. The bundle is on the Malign Sorcery and Corset. So make sure you look at the Facebook, it'll be on the Facebook, it'll be on the store website, get your pre-orders in to guarantee yourself your bits for release day. Uh, that's all from myself and John. If you do have any questions, still want to ask them, uh, best point of call would probably be either messaging the store ourselves or drop us a comment on the Weekend Warlords Age of Sigma group page. Uh, that will have all any more info to any Age of Sigma going on in store. Also, if you haven't got your ticket, a week tomorrow is going to be our Age of Sigma Grand Tournament. What better way to say goodbye to first edition of Age of Sigma and welcome in the new age is a two-day event, five games, three on Saturday, two on Sunday, crowning a Grand Tournament winner. If you would like a ticket, again, it's on our store website and there's a link on the Facebook group. We'll see you soon.